Hmm? Hola, Dubies. We are in Paris. <laughs> okay, let me explain how I ended up in Juarez. Two words, Tex, Mex. Actually, it's more like one word with the hyphen between it, according to Wikipedia. But El Paso Juarez is a border town between the US and Mexico. It's one of the only cities in the US where it's divided in half between two countries. And I wanted to see, experience, and eat my way through the fusion of Mexico and Texas in the past. So, vamonos, boobies. Let's eat. We're at Chico's Tacos. I feel like this is the epitome of Tex-Mex in a fast food setting. This does not look like your average taqueria. I feel like this is the Mexican version of McDonald's. But this is their take on flautas. It's tortilla and inside is going to be ground up beef. The American creation on this is gonna be the shredded cheese. Jalapeno sauce, and we're just going to pour that on top. When I lived in Canada, my mom would buy these taco seasoning packs from Walmart and make Taco Tuesday. And this is exactly what it tastes like in the best way possible. And the cheese, as it hits the sauce, gets really nice and melty. Moving on, we have some classic crinkle cut fries. It's a little thicker than the ones that you would usually find. Tastes American. I like how it says on the drinks, Chico's Tacos, and their slogan is an El Paso tradition. And they have a couple of locations around El Paso, but this is their main location. I don't think I've ever had a hot dog on a hamburger bun, and this looks crazy. So it's wiener sausages cut in half and brulee and caramelized. And on the bottom is some sort of chili underneath. And there's also some pickles underneath as well. This looks insane. A torta, which is a Mexican sandwich using American hamburger buns, wiener sausages, and chili of bean and beef. What have I done? I kind of have to chase it down with a french fry, not gonna lie. It's interesting. Let's just put it at that. That was such a delicious start to El Paso. I am definitely craving something a little bit sweet and maybe a little bit of tamales too. So uh, let's go to our next location. The scenery here is crazy. Everywhere you go, the Franklin Mountain just kind of like is in the background, just towering over the city and the ridges are absolutely gorgeous. We're here at our next spot, Gussie's Bakery. The mural on here is absolutely crazy. There's like 10 bakers who are just in different moods, doing different things, and uh, it looks like such a cozy neighborhood bakery. I can't wait to try some of their tamales. It even says on the mural, world-class tamales, and uh, let's also get some colchas. Wow, looks so high. This is such a cool little spot. Everywhere is so colorful. The pastry looks amazing. I'm also gonna definitely get some of their tamales too. I love these like Halloween themed cookies too. They're so cute. Are there any that you would recommend? Everybody likes the pineapple and Oh, okay. Raspberry with coconut. Raspberry with coconut? Yeah. We always sell the more, more the red with pork and the green chili with cheese. Okay, oh, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, have a great day. I'm definitely gonna try the chocolate concha. I love the fact that they also sell fresh tortillas here too. Looks really good. It almost looks like a strudel. Could we also get one tamale, the one with the um, red with pork and also the green with cheese, please? Just one and one? Yes, please. I think I wanna start from savory and end with sweet. All of this was also only $8.50, which is crazy because we got so much bread. And the tamales come like this. Wow. These are really nice and steamy. Wow. I just know these tamales are gonna be good when it comes from a plastic bag like that. Anything wrapped is always a good sign. So I ordered two tamales, one red with pork and one green with cheese and chilies. And there's so much filling inside too, which is always a good sign. There's so much meat in this one bite. You can just taste how fresh the masa is. It's crumbly, it's warm. It's really wow. welcoming. I think that's the word I want to use. 
It's held gently together with moisture, but as soon as you chew on it, it crumbles into this delicious, almost congee like texture. Oh, so yummy. Wow, look at that. So inside here, we have some cheese and green chili. This type of green chili we call chili relleno. You get these large poblano chilies and roast it high and peel the skin off, and inside you have this almost sweet, pepper-like flavor and that's what this is stuffed with and it's very popular food to use especially in northern mexico i have to say this one's definitely my favorite the pepper is sweet mm. but also at the same time it gives a little bit of the heat and a slight bit of bitterness that works really well with the melty cheese and the sweet masa that covers it and these combination of flavors is just immaculate but we have a lot more to try especially with the sweet baked goods and i think we're going to enjoy them up on Franklin Mountain, looking at the view of El Paso Juarez. That was one of the most cutest neighborhood joints I've seen. You can tell that this is very much a beloved neighborhood joint and it's very heartwarming to see all these local businesses really thriving here in El Paso. Let's go enjoy these on the top of the mountain and the drive up there is gonna be so beautiful. Come with me. I like their branding. I'm a big sparkling water aficionado, I want to say. Some may even call a connoisseur, but I think the sparkling amount on uh, Topo Chico is better than any other sparkling water brands out there. Just putting that out. Much better than LaCroix and San Pellegrino. Anyways, this is so freaking beautiful. You see the whole skyline of El Paso and you even see the border between El Paso and Juarez. You see that X right there? That's where Juarez is. El Paso is such a magical place because it's one of the only cities where the city is divided in half. Well, technically in three, because there's the New Mexico side, there's the Texan El Paso side, and then there is the Mexican side of Juarez. It's a very beautiful relic of a city. And you can see that really in how the city is shaped. So you call this a concha because it looks like a conch, a seashell. So all the lines right here, this is made by putting a layer of sugar and butter. And as the bread rises, the sugar and butter layer cracks, creating this almost seashell shape. In Korean, we actually call this melon bread. Same style. The cookie crumble on top, this one's the chocolate version. It's really good. Mmm. I love bread. This is the pineapple filled one. And it's the pineapple empanada. So this is the baked version. Whoa. Vibrant yellow. Not gonna lie, the color is slightly throwing me off, but... Mmm. Pretty nice, actually. It reminds me of Chinese-style pineapple bread as well. There's a very similar version. And inside is um, this kind of like jellied pineapple jam situation kind of happening. But the pie dough around it is really crispy and delicious. Not bad, actually. Not bad. And this is the version that I'm actually more excited about. This is the same thing, except it's kind of in like phyllo pastry almost. You can tell because it's super flaky and just almost breaking apart. Whoa, oh. It's good. The same um, pineapple jam inside. I like it. Yeah, definitely I like this one better than the empanada version. I'm the king of the world! I'm the king of the world! I like it here. It's really nice. There's not a single cloud in the sky. Not a single one. Never seen anything quite like it. And the city just continues on as far as the eye can see. I've never crossed the US-Mexico border by car. I have no idea what the experience is gonna be like. Not gonna lie, there's definitely a part of me that's a little nervous, but I really wanna see what's on the other side.
I really love how salty and acidic everything is down here. As a salty and acid lover, this is right up my alley. I'm trying the margarita also. Phenomenal. Just need to get a little bit of booze in me, you know? Nachos Grande screams American to me, but this is loaded with refried beans, ground beef, jalapeno, melted cheese, iceberg lettuce, sour cream, tomatoes, and guacamole. You need a good dollop of sour cream on this bad boy. And guac. Like that. This is Super Bowl Sunday in one bite. Super indulgent. It's exactly what I want after a bit of margarita and a couple of drinks. This is like the perfect food. I have my enchiladas in front of me. So inside is chicken and topped up with the mole sauce, which is the darkest one right here. We have the red sauce and also the green sauce. And we have some refried beans as well as some chile con queso, which is the poblano chilies, as well as some queso cheese mixed with a little bit of American cheddar cheese action happening as well. That is heavy. It's not authentic Mexican food. It's not authentic American food. It's authentic Tex-Mex food. And that's the thing you have to come to El Paso and realize. This is a beautiful amalgamation of two cultures using local ingredients and creating something that's uniquely innate to El Paso. You might try the red sauce one. Ooh, this looks spicy. Much fresher. It's acidic, it's pungent, it's spicy. And the Korean in me is loving the red spice. Perhaps what I'm the most excited for, I have not had any mole yet on this trip. It's sweet, it's earthy, it's so flavorful. Wow. And the mole that they use is called a mole negra, and it's used by using chocolate in the mole. This is an even bigger plate. I honestly don't know how I'm going to tackle this. So this is a chili relleno. And inside, you see that green chili stuffed with a little bit of con queso. And it has that really fluffy, nice layer of egg batter that covers it with a heavy blanket of cheese on top. Absolutely delicious. And the batter on this is incredible. It's fluffy, it's light, it's not heavy at all. And it's not a crunchy batter, that's the important part. And inside, when you bite into it, you're welcome with this burst of cheese. Look at how beautifully welted this pepper is. I know I'm an El Paso baby. That was really, really good. Homie. Something you can only find in El Paso, authentic, true Tex-Mex. Whatever that means. Why don't we go for a little drive up Franklin Drive and uh, see the city during the night. border over there. I honestly thought that it was going to be really difficult to cross the border. You have to go through immigration, but it was actually super duper easy. We just drove in. That was it. So a little anticlimactic. I thought it was going to be more intense, but it was an easy peasy lemon breezy. Lemon squeezy. It's weird because just yesterday I was over there looking at this. dry, so hot today. So it's kind of heat kills you. 
Again, you are witnessing the danger of free will. I have a delicious horchata with me right here and also a piña agua fresca. So agua fresca means fresh juice and this one's the pineapple flavor and this one is the horchata. So horchata is made with tiger nut milk and also with a bit of cinnamon. It's such a refreshing way to start your day. Compared to El Paso, Juarez is definitely a city that's very much bustling and alive and there's a lot happening. I'm in the city square right now. Somebody is blasting out a Bible verse from the speakers. There's people who are shining their shoes, there's people hanging out, and there's also some vendors that are hustling. And this is a city that's very, very vibrant. A lot more different than El Paso. I like it here. It's cool. I like it here a lot. We're at our first location. We're gonna get some breakfast here at Cafe Central. And the menu looks crazy. There's a little bit of everything. They also sell a little bit of Chinese food, breakfast food, diner food. It looks so good. And everyone seems to be having a really good time too. So it's a vibe. Gracias. So I got a plate of huevos rancheros. You can see so many different colored peppers on top. And the egg looks perfectly cooked. Okay. I know it's gonna be juicy. Wow cooked to perfection. I could have this for breakfast any day. So underneath is a wheat-based tortilla that they quickly just roast on the pan. I love how all the flavors work together to create this bite. Mm. But what I'm even more excited about is this warm bowl of menudo, a cow tripe soup. And tripe is the small intestine of a cow, so you can see the linings of the stomach right here. It's really, really fatty and juicy and it has a really nice textural bounce. There's also these big kernels of corn and when you bite into it, it's really, really creamy. It almost has like a beanie texture, but it's sweet and it complements the spicy broth really well. So good. I'm gonna add a little bit of baby limes and a bit of onions as well for crunch. Wow. The tripe is tender and spicy and fatty and it just melts in your mouth as soon as you put it in. It just tastes like a really well cooked beef stew. Let it soak up all that tripe drippings and goodness. Mm. I don't know, the Korean in me would have definitely preferred a little bit of rice with this soup instead of bread, but that's just me. Chilaquiles. So chilaquiles is tortilla chips that's been fried and smothered in mole sauce. It's very different from the mole negra that I tried yesterday. This is even better. It soaks up that sauce very well, but at the same time, it's crunchy, it's filling, and it's one of the best ways to reuse leftover stale tortillas because you can just fry it up, put some sauce on, and there you have it, a very good breakfast. We completely devoured it. This is a really, really good start to Juarez. We're gonna walk around the street market. There's a lot happening and just explore around and feel the city's vibe. Let's go. Hi, my name is Joao Vadillo. I'm the owner of this place. And this place, it starts in 1947. We start like the family business. So my grandpa, he started like at the age of 15 or 14. We made everything from scratch, from the salsa with the tortillas, we made everything. This is a traditional place in Juarez. The only one. <laughs> Could we get the deshebrada burrito? Yeah, also with the aguacate. So chile uh, uh, relleno. Okay. Yeah, chile relleno. Yeah. Okay, one for the Gracias. So I ordered two burritos. One is the deshebrada. Deshebrada means 
pulled meat. So usually it's a chuck roast, a type of lean meat that they usually braise and then you pull it apart. And you can think of it almost as like pulled pork, but this is the beef version. And it also has peppers, onions, and I even added a little avocado on the side for a bit of creaminess. They make everything from scratch. This includes the tortillas in the morning, as well as the meat and everything is all made in-house. Salsa verde inside. The meat is super juicy and tender. It's warm and the tortillas are a little thick. It's a really fresh bite. I especially love that the meat has been cooked and then cooked again on the skillets. If you take a look at their stoves, it's crazy. The cast iron that they cook in is really thick and you can see that this is a place with a lot of history and age. So they opened in 1947, which means they've been open for almost 80 years, which is crazy to think about. And this one is the chile relleno. It's the poblado pepper that we've seen all throughout the meals that we've been eating. And underneath is a little smear of the refried beans as well as uh, pico de gallo. I'm gonna add a little bit of the salsa. It's super light and fluffy. The batter is so nice, it's super crispy, and inside is moist and gushy. And you get that slight bit of bitterness at the end along with the sweetness of the peppers with the tomatoes and the onions all together with the creaminess of the beans. They're super flavorful, it's moist. I also love the salsa they have on the side. I'm literally making a gigantic mess right now. Is there queso inside the chile relleno? Chile relleno. Relleno. <laughs> well, uh, the chile relleno is filled with cheese, uh, menonita cheese. It's by a little community of the state of Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. They made their own cheese, so mm -hmm. we use that type of cheese of here in, in the in the burritos. Uh -huh. So they they speak Spanish, they speak English, and they speak their own language. Mm -hmm. Also, they speak Germany, but they speak the mm -hmm. a different type of German. Wow. I had a fantastic meal. They're really, really sweet people and the burritos here are fantastic. But most importantly, the vibes are immaculate. My belly's full, my heart is full. This was the perfect end to El Paso Juarez. And that is all the things I ate in both cities. Obviously, 24 hours is not enough time to cover both of these beautiful cities. To me, El Paso Juarez is one of the most beautiful places that coexist together. It's similar, but yet so different, and that's the beauty of it. Hopefully, next time when you come visit, you'll be able to see both. And that is all, and uh... <laughs>